Hi everybody, this is Brian David Marshall coming to you from the World Championships in Chiba, Japan. I'm here with freshly minted Hall of Famer Brian Kebler. We're deep into day one. You're 5-0 with this deck. Tell us what it's called. Uh, this is my favorite deck name of all time actually. It is a uh, Kago. <laughs> and this is putting the car in the Kago? So it's a, it's a blue-white control deck with the only creature is actually Squadron Hawk. The, uh, the Squadron Hawk is just an incredibly powerful card that lets the deck have an aggressive position against uh, opposing control decks. You can fight Luminarch Ascension, attack Jaces, as well as just being a great blocker and just a fine win condition. So, I mean, in a lot of ways, it's a, it's a very traditional blue-white control deck, uh, Day of Judgment. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, Day Judgment seems like, a, I mean, everyone's talking about Valakit coming into this format, uh, a deck that's killing you with a land. It seems kind of odd that a deck with Day of Judgment is doing so well. Day, Day of Judgment is a very interesting card against Valakit. You actually, we, have, we actually have our fourth Day of Judgment in the sideboard, and we bring it in against Valakit because we have so many ways to, to deal with Valakit itself, the card. We have four Tectonic Edge and four Spreading Seas at their sideboard that really we're only, we're only worried about dying to their creatures. They, you know, we, they, they, can even, uh, they can even play as a Primeval Titan, get some Valakits, and it can, you, you, you can kill it the next turn, kill their Valakits, and still win. I actually bounced the Primeval Titan with Jace in my last match and won that one. <laughs> You also can kill Inferno Titans, which have sort of moved into yeah, the Valakit mix. Well, Avenger of Zendikar week. is a big deal too. I mean, you have sure. you just have so many answers, and even even the the decks that have uh, overgrown battlement, killing multiple overgrown battlements is great because you shut down so much of their mana. So th this is essentially your your creature control package mm -hmm. right here. Although I guess this guy also factors in some. Gideon, Gideon Gideon does a lot of work. He uh, he's our, our other real real way that we win. The main way that we win usually is is, is Gideon. Uh, Gideon's actually fantastic, even against uh, Valakut, where it seems like it would be pretty poor, because it's, it's a threat that you can have on board, day away their Avenger and still just kill them. Uh, a Gideon Jura, along with a Celestial Colonnade, is a two-turn clock. It's 10 damage a turn. So you can close up the game very fast compared to a lot of other control decks. Right. So control decks, obviously, we have some counter spells. One thing that's actually really important here, uh, the, the hard counter, Stoke, Rebuttal, and Deprive, they're actually incredibly crucial against, uh, against Valakut, because they can ramp so much with their mana. You see, we actually only have two mana links. Mana Link is a card that most decks start with four of. It's actually uh, Brad Nelson uh, was, was the one who, who really innovated and worked on this deck. He got it from uh, Akira Asahara, who will also be playing in the Magic Online Championship. Uh, and he put a lot of work into it, and one thing that he, he realized was, particularly with Squadron Hawk on your deck, Mana Link gets a lot worse. You don't want to hold up two mana. You never, you never really do. You want to be playing proactive cards like Squadron Hawk, which also makes Spell Pierce a lot better. Because people won't cast things like Harrow into two open mana, they certainly cast it into one. So uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the other Planeswalkers in the deck. Uh, all the other Planeswalkers appear to be they Jace. Have, they have a new name, Jace. <laughs> uh, Jace, I mean, Jace is, I mean, he's awesome. The, not only you know, is it card advantage machine, it, the, the most important card in control mirrors. Again, it's a great card against Valakid decks. Valakid decks are incredibly threat light. They have so many cards that make mana, fetch lands, put lands to play, that if you can stick a Jace and protect it, kill their Valakid so they can't, they can't kill it with, uh, with mountains, uh, you can just bottom all their threats and end up just winning the game that way. Right. We got a we got a nice little one of here. <laughs> you always have the one ofs, don't you? I I have a, one of my favorite one ofs. It's still waiting in the sideboard. But uh, it's actually very much a, a seventy five card deck. It's not really a deck and a sideboard. Uh, it has a lot of strange cards that are that are you know small numbers in the main deck that have more of in the sideboard. We have one spreading seas main deck because you want more ways to deal with you know Valakut as well as Manlands, which is a great card. It's also interestingly very good against vampires. Vampires, if you're on the play and you, you spreading seize them, it's actually a stone rain draw card because all their cards cost black. I, I talked to Sam Black after you guys played in round two or three and he, he said he just had a sideboard full of strip mines and uh, swords to plow shares. <laughs> Basically, I mean, the, 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 the deck, it sideboards very well. There's, you know, Brad put a lot of work into the sideboard and making sure all the numbers were right, as well as, uh, as, well as getting you know, the, just the right sorts of cards that you want to have against each opponent. Uh, it's actually very funny. If you look at the deck when you're sideboarding against different decks, uh, you basically are either mono white with Jace or or, or a mono blue with Gideon. You, know, you take out pretty much all your counters against uh, against the the creature decks, and you have just tons of creature removal where it's vice versa against the other. Decks. So uh, I mean, another win condition you have in here is uh, the Celestial Colonnades. Yeah, Celestial Colonnades. So you have really three three ways to win. Well, Jace is actually a huge and, way to win. Right, Jace, that's true. Jace, I actually have won probably about half my games with Jace and half my games with Damage in this tournament so far. How big has Tectonic Edge been for you? This seems like... Tectonic Edge is absolutely huge. Uh, not only can you, uh, you know, really pressure your opponent's mana in a lot of cases, just as a land destruction spell, someone stumbles on land, you kill their land, they're in trouble. Uh, it's also you know, crucial for dealing with Valakit, crucial for dealing with man lands. You know, it, being able to, to take out opposing uh, you know, creeping tar pits. I even killed a colony garden with a Tectonic Edge because I was on the uh, spreading seize all your green sources plan against the Valakit deck, and it worked out. 
So, and then, I mean, one of the things, you talked about, like, a mono blue deck mm -hmm. with Gideon or a mono white deck with Jace. You have so many dual lands in this format. Yeah, yeah there, there is so much good mana fixing right now. Uh, it's, it's not like it was before where, you know, you had just mana fixing, you could play any, any colors or spells you want. You know, you have Cryptic Command and Putrid Leech in the same deck, things like that. Now, the, the two color decks have incredibly solid mana bases that actually come on mind very fast. The Scars uh, dual lands, they're, they're probably among the best cards in that set. They're so good, both at uh, helping beatdown decks have a fast start and get their mana together, as well as control decks being able to keep up you know, being able to keep up spell pierce in turn one, being able to preordain turn one. All these are very important things. Let's talk a little bit about your sideboard. You, you called right. it a 75 card deck. Uh, tectonic Edge in the sideboard seems like, why wouldn't you want to have four of these main we, deck? In some matchups against Valakit, for instance, we want Tectonic Edge for the value of it. Against other control decks, we actually just want another land. We, we, we didn't want to have uh, too many uh, colorless sources in our main deck. We have lots of double color spells of both colors. So it was important that our mana base was stable in terms of colors, but we wanted access to the fourth edge, so we put it in the sideboard. Okay. So the fourth wrath, or mm -hmm. damn judgment, as the kids like <laughs> to call wrath. it these days. <laughs> why, why, why a fourth one in the board? Uh, I mean, creature decks against uh, against Valakut. I mean, it, a lot of the things are. It's not like you, you don't want certain cards in some matchups. It's just that you want them instead of other cards. You you, uh, you don't want your condemns against a deck that when they attack they put lands into play. But you do want ways to remove creatures. So day of judgment's perfect. Right. You got uh, the sixth Jace. Yeah. <laughs> Again, just, you know, you actually, interestingly enough, Jace actually comes in against a lot of creature decks because you, you want to have, because after cybering your deck is just all removal, you just want card flow. That when you're trading one for one with just efficient, cheap removal spells, getting a Jace online when they can't attack it is just super important. Right. So we have, we have one Deprive, two Deprives after sideboard. Again, another hard counter. We were debating between Deprive and Negate. Deprive is so much better against Valakit because it can stop things like Avenger of Zendikar or Primeval Titan uh, that we were willing to sacrifice a little bit of edge other big card this weekend. People seem to have almost forgotten about this card. It's, it's very interesting. Uh, almost all of our blue decks eventually got to four spreading seas, somewhere between deck and sideboard. Uh, it, it is both a great card against, against Valakit, so you don't just lose a Primeval Titan entrance play. Uh, as well as, you know, as I said before, great against Manlands, great against Vampires, just all around a great card. Right. The third and fourth Condemn in the sideboard? It's interesting. We, we debated between Condemn and Journey to Nowhere, uh, and eventually just went with Condemn because the deck uses its mana so heavily you very often will just have, you know, you'll play a Jace, have one open. You'll play a Squadron Hawk, have one open. So things that cost one are actually super important. You see, same reason between Spell Pierce and Manly. Condemn is just the best, cheap removal you have. It, let, it lets you get the most spells out of a turn. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us about Celestial Purge. Celestial Purge uh, is really important against the Vampire decks. Uh, the Vampire decks have Dark Tutelage, which is just a absolute nightmare for control decks to deal with. This deck is able to just remove it. Or, in, you know, in the case of uh, them... Having dudes and not Dark Tutelage, you can use it to kill their creatures. Sure. You can kill a Grave Titan. Uh, yeah, well, we, we actually were debating whether the third slot should be a Devout Lightcaster, because I don't like having a Celestial Purge against Blue Black, because it only deals with Grave Titan, but a uh, Devout Lightcaster against them deals with Grave Titan, blocks their tokens, and it's actually really hard for them to kill. So that's one thing that was up in the air until the last minute. Oh, only two Flash Freeze? I mean, we, we have the Deprived because we want it elsewhere too, and Flash Freezes, uh, again, they're very important as hard counters against Valakit, but they, they don't really have that much application elsewhere. Okay. So, uh, you weren't able to play with uh, the same Elspeth you played with in Austin, but you still <laughs> managed to get one Elspeth into the I did, the stack. I did. It was actually kind of funny because I, I, this is one, uh, one of my major contributions to the deck, actually, is the one Elspeth. <laughs> Uh, but it wasn't just, you know, I, I just want to have one Elspeth in my deck. Elspeth is actually just an incredibly powerful card in the right, in the right scenarios. Uh, against Vampires, for instance, you, you just play Elspeth, make three 1-1s, one they're in trouble. Like, 1-1s one are really good against their deck. And, you know, it, with the amount of cheap removal you have, you can very easily, you know, stop them from, from beating you down, play Elspeth, take control of the game. Uh, my, my match against Sam Black this weekend, I was down to two life. I played an Elspeth, made guys. Next turn, just turned my Gideon into a creature. Colonnade just ended the game at 12. So it, it stops you from losing to things like Lightning Bolt, where those decks wouldn't really be able to kill you if right. you have else. Right, you're, you're a two, and it's just a matter of time before they draw exactly. a bolt and kill exactly. you. Exactly. All, all, it gets you out of range of their reach, which is right. huge. So you're 5-0 you're to start this event. I am. You were inducted into the Hall of Fame this weekend. No Hall of Famer has made the top eight on the weekend of their induction. Yet. Well, there you have it. For <laughs> Brian Kembler, this is Brian David Marshall. We'll see you in the Tournament Center in a couple rounds. Thank <laughs> you.